Hello, buddy. My name is Eric, and today we're going to be talking about the Google controversy. So Google has gotten caught. Uh, now, the weirdest thing about this is this is not something they just snuck in and got caught in 4K. No, this is actually functionality that has existed in Chrome for 11 years. In October of 2013, Google added functionality uh, to make debugging Hangouts easier that essentially creates a hidden extension that only works on Google.com. Some people say it's Google Sites, but it's, it's specifically it's only Google.com. I've tried YouTube and blog.google. So there's some discussion about it. And I, I yeah, it's an old tech daddy hack, but it's still in meat. And I can understand why this is useful, but that's also why, as people point out, it's anti-competitive. So what does it do? Well, I'll just show you. So we can execute this. Uh, we need chrome.runtime.sendmessage and then the extensions ID, because while the extension is hidden from your extensions page, it does exist. Method.cpu.getinfo. And I think there may be a few others, but this is the main one. What it does is, and of course on this system, is just going to get the name of it, number of processors, and then uh, CPU time. This is a relative, it's not a way of displaying that that I've seen before, but we, we can see that there we go. And it would also, in theory, return temperatures. I assume that only works on Chromebooks, but maybe I'm wrong. And it works across architectures. Uh, here it is on a native x86 system. I'm, on x86, it'll also show what features your processor has. Although it doesn't show all of them, it doesn't show AVX 512, so it's only things that Chrome supports. And, of course, we're not going to show all the CPUs on a 192-core system. And then we can try it on Windows, and we get approximately, we get, well, other than the number, we get the same result. So there's no impact. Uh, so it do doesn't detect VMs, and it shows, it shows the uh, processor time. So what this is is probably useful for, and here's a Googler commenting on the controversy. I, I work at Google, but not on Chrome or these APIs. I think this explanation is quite mundane. Open Google Meet, start an empty meeting, click the troubleshooting and help page. There'll be plots of various stats, including CPU utilization. I think Meet will also suggest closing tabs if your machine is overloaded. That seems to, he said he's not sure if that's actually true. And other people are saying it's giving you an unfair competitive advantage. Well, yeah, but it's a bit like, though, how Microsoft, when writing software for Windows, or Apple for Mac, for that matter, has a competitive advantage. But it's a bit sketchy in terms of the privacy implementation and just the fact that this has effectively gone unnoticed for so long. Let's see. And here's an explanation of how it's a useful feature. I think the other thing it's useful for is simply like any form of telemetry, which is always a balance because it's not good. It's like it's not good for privacy. Uh, a developer can see if there's a specific function within Meet that is triggering high CPU usage. Uh, now, I, I don't know how great this is actually working for Google, because I know whenever I used Meet a few years ago, it pretty much always crashed on me. So I, I don't know if they're getting the full advantage of this. So here's the original thread. So Google gives all stall.google com sites full access to system tab cpu usage gpu usage and memory usage also gives detailed processor information and provides a logging back channel this api is not exposed to other sites only to google.com this is interesting because it's a clear violation of the idea that browser vendors should not give preference to their websites over anyone else's the dma codifies this into law for those of you who don't know dma is an eu regulation digital market act browser vendors as gatekeepers of the internet must give the same capabilities to everyone Depending on how you interpret the DMA, uh, this additional exposure of information only to Google properties could be seen as a violation of the DMA. Take, for example, Zoom. They're at a disadvantage because they can't get the same CPU debugging. And then here it's explained how this is actually accomplished. It's not... Now, I assumed, right, when I saw this hadn't gone unnoticed, that this was just going to be something hidden in the a proprietary version of Chrome, because if you didn't know, there's Chromium and there's Chrome, but this is actually in the open source Chromium. And here is the source code for the Hangout Services extension. And here is where we can see get CPU info, and we can also learn what the other ones do. Logging set metadata, logging start, logging upload and render close. Logging stall, logging discard. Let's look at what this one shows. Not allowed? Okay. 
but not all of them. Oh, oh, I see. Chrome Enterprise. Okay, so it's not for everyone. And here is the part that can that returns all of that uh, telemetry. So this isn't a super hard to understand. This is 200 lines of code, thunk.js, and we can see the other bits of it. Manifest v3 and v2. Background, which, oh, it's just HTML. And of course, given this is a hidden function, you're not supposed to know about it. You cannot disable it on Chrome. However, you can in Chromium-derived browsers. Uh, and most browsers uh, also have left it intact. And then here, uh, Brave is tagged, and Brandon Ike, the CEO of Brave Software, comments, although he does know about it, and gives a bit of his thoughts. Uh, and we can try this in Brave. I have Brave here, and we can see that it works about the same way. All the same data. However, I, my understanding is if you go to the extensions in Brave, it is actually possible to turn it off. Uh, Brave is going to remove it. It was apparently at some point in history it was needed for this. They even, because uh, Brave has a page where they explain what they've changed from Chromium. And they explain here that it is enabled. Uh, okay, so it's under Brave Settings Extensions. Here it is. So it's the same place that you can disable the media router. So we can disable it like this. And you can also get rid of Widevine if you don't like that. And this is th this is another function. So Brave does allow you to disable it, but leaves it on by default. Edge doesn't allow you to disable it, but I imagine now this controversy is broken out. Uh, something will be done about that. And here's what happens if you run the same command on Edge. We're still going to do allow pasting. Which, for whatever reason, works. I, I, I don't understand why it sometimes works, sometimes doesn't, but here we go. And there we go. Same data, uh, all the same telemetry, no no problems. So, yeah, pretty much every Chromium browser works the same. Actually, since I have it installed, uh, let's just quickly try Onk. Because that is, yeah, that uses Blink. Works on Alk browser as well. Let me just see if I have Opera installed. Yeah, I don't. Okay, but we'll we'll assume that it works. Firefox and every non Chromium browser doesn't have it to begin with, so they're all uh, fine. So I don't find this. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's not great. It's not. It's not like they're sending your browsing history to Google or well, that actually does happen if you sign in, but it's not as bad. But yeah, you can see it being anti-competitive. I'm sure this was something that happened with reasonably good intentions, but it's, it's not a great look. So that's going to be all uh, for this video. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts on uh, this scandal are. Uh, and also, do you use Chrome? Do you use uh, a Chromium browser like Brave or Derivatives, or do you use something else? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Bye.